it's a God-given desire to, to love Jesus, to follow Jesus, to be willing to, to, suf to suffer, to sacrifice for Him. Amen? That's why I thank God for this prophecy. Because if I didn't get that prophecy in 1989, I don't know what I would be doing today. Right? So it's, it's served as a purpose. It has a purpose. I received it in 89 for this moment. Because otherwise, I could be anywhere now, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't get that prophecy, right? I could be anywhere now. Wow. But hey, I'm still here. And, and God opened the door, you know? John MacArthur has a YouTube channel. RC's Pro has a YouTube channel. Matt Slick has a YouTube channel. And even dead apologies. You know, James White, uh, they have their channels. You know, sometimes I look at the famous actors or, or rappers or guitarists from the 90s. They're still, doing YouTube. They're still famous today because they have a channel. YouTube, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. You know the singer uh, Engelbert Humperdinck? Senior now. The, the guy who sang, please release me, let me go. Filipinos love that in karaoke. <laughs> Every Filipino sings that. Amen? Why? You let search YouTube, he's still singing, you know, 70 years old. Let me go. His wife died of COVID, that's the only thing. <coughs> died from COVID. But he still entertains his fans as a senior. He can still sing really well. So they're still famous. So God opened this door for me. When I'm dead, the world will still hear this video, this gospel. Mm -hmm. Don't tell me it's not from God. Mm -hmm. Well, you may, some people may not like it because they don't like to watch some, well, how many, there's a lot of people in the world who are watching. Yeah. Right? All over the world, yeah. Maybe in Ukraine, people are watching preachers. The soldiers, the people, they have no electricity for, you know, one third of the country has no electricity. No water. So only cell phones. That's the only form of communication they have, the cell phones. So maybe some of them are watching this gospel videos. Amen. Praise God. So God has a purpose. Amen. We are all disciples. God birthed this in my heart. And I don't have to worry about becoming like Jesus because through the years, the Spirit of God will transform you to be like Jesus. Of course, I'm still responsible to obey, to go to church, to read my Bible, to give, to resist temptation. I still have that responsibility. But what fuels, what fuels that desire, that responsibility is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is like the gasoline that fuels the, the fire, the passion. Amen? Without the Holy Spirit, we're all... Kaya mga taong walang Holy Spirit, they're trying to live the Christian life. It's hard work, hard work. There's no empowerment. That's why nawawala sila. Because they're into religion. That's why I always preach, come to Jesus. Be born again. Don't practice religion. You will burn out. Be saved. Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. Now when you have the Holy Spirit, now you're indestructible. You have this power to, to go on and on and on, right? Praise the Lord to keep the Christian life, to live the Christian life. That's why Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen? So, how does God accomplish discipleship? Well, God is at work. We must understand that God is also at work, not just us. God is also at work in me. Right? I do my part, but God is also working at the same time. Well, he opens doors and closes doors for me and for you. Amen. Amen. Right? Amen. 
That's why when Gina prayed that prayer in 1983, the Lord closed the door for her to leave the Philippines. Yeah. Amen? That's why I met her. Thank the Lord. Praise God. Amen. Mawala na ng mundo, huwag lang siya. Ito ang aming love story. Till death. Ipapapelikula yun. Till death. Amen! Hindi na yung nagalit ang buwan, ha? Iba yun. Ayoko na nun! Sa iyo. Iba na ngayon. Ibang story na, mawala na ang mundo, huwag lang siya. Totoo naman yun eh. Pagtanda nyo, kayo na lang dalawa eh. Wala na, they're all gone. Di ba? Everybody will be gone. It's true. Amen. Praise God. So yeah, the Lord opened the door and, and she became a believer in France. Right? And, and for me too, I, the Lord closed the door in 1986 and I became a believer here in Canada. So when our daughter left us, it grieved my heart, but I believe God's hand is upon it. Amen. The Lord closed the door in Vancouver. Mm -hmm. And and when I saw her last time in the wedding, she said, she's not coming back. <laughs> it's fear. She's not coming back. Even when we moved, she's not coming back. <laughs> and Sam is moving back from Calgary to Grand Forks now. So plans are changing. Amen. And Josh is going planning to go to Toronto. Right? But well, anyway, really it's done. the Lord who, who does these things. So that's why here, all things work together for good. Okay. See, all things work together for good. God is in, in control of everything. Amen. Amen. Uh, all things work together for good because God's purpose is to draw people to himself. Mm -hmm. See, Maybe in the plan of God, you will only get saved if he brings you to this city, right? Or if he removes things in your life that you treasure. That's why God can use losses, tribulations, conflicts. Just like Joseph, right? Joseph lost his family. He was sold as a slave. But that's how he became the savior of Israel, right? Mm -hmm. That was his destiny. So all things work together for good. What well, some people are, are saying, uh, you know, in the news, uh, NATO officials uh, are saying, one NATO secretary, high-ranking profile spokesman said that Russia has no intention of ending this war. Mm -hmm. I think the NATO secretary said that. Well, you know, it's not going to end. It will only end when God is finished. Remember yeah. this. His purpose. God is in control of this. His purpose is finished. Yeah. So and sometimes there's a talk, there's a lot of uh, fear about having a nuclear war. Because the U.S. keeps on supporting Ukraine. So what that, what that means is the U.S. is pushing World War III and nuclear exchange, nuclear escalation. Yeah. These are tough decisions, you know. Politicians make their own decisions. They think it's a fight for democracy versus autocracy, that's support. Okay, you can do that. You can do that too, you know. But what if it results in a nuclear escalation, right? Because uh, Russia is losing conventional warfare. What if? they lose all their weapons and then they use their nuclear bombs. Mm -hmm. So you gotta be ready for that, right? God is in so, well, when God is finished, yeah. it's affecting gas, it's affecting economy. Well, God is, God is touching our pockets. What can you do? If the Lord binabawasan ng Diyos yung pera natin, yung kayamanan natin, yung magagawa ka ba doon? God is also in control of that. Amen. Amen. Don't you think so? Hallelujah. What if God is judging the world? Mm -hmm. 
Remember, he used Pharaoh. God said in Romans 9, you know, I will raise up Pharaoh. In the book of Exodus, how many times did God say, I will harden his heart? Hmm. That my name might be known. The world. See, what if God is hardening the heart of Putin so that he, he can accomplish his purpose? Through him. You know, a lot of religious people will get angry at me. Because that's not the God we know. Mm -hmm. what? This is scripture. Mm -hmm. This is what I've been studying for the last 5, 10, 20 years. Right? This is apologetics. The last 5 years I've been studying apologetics. The sovereignty of God. There's a reason why God will use the Antichrist. Don't you know that in Revelation? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God will use the Antichrist. In Revelation, the, the cost of one bagel will be one, one day labor. One day wage. You'll have to work one day to buy one bagel. Yeah. Prophesy. Well, I know it's it's hard, but all things work together for good. Good. Accomplishes. If this is God's outreach to the world, evangelism, well, so be it. Amen. You know why the Israelites were willing to leave Egypt? Because of their hardship. Because they were turned into slaves. Mm -hmm. yep. Right? And so when God delivered them, they, want, they all wanted to leave. What if God gave them properties, resorts, <laughs> mansions? Cadillacs. You think they will leave Egypt? No. <laughs> no. No. See, the wisdom of God is higher than our ways, right? See, God has a way of making us obey. That's the bottom line. If God ordained me to be an evangelist, only God knows how, how it will happen. Amen. Right? Only God knows how to make it happen. Right? Amen. And if God wants me to make videos, to travel, to go to Mount Everest and make a, wow. a video there. Wow, the top of the mountain. Wow. That's why I need to stay fit now. <laughs> 10,000 steps every Because Monte Kananaski speak. Yeah. The that. best hiking places in the world. With the bear, though. Yeah. <laughs> With the bear. I'll carry a 12 gauge. <laughs> Sam has a 12 gauge. He has a license now. And preach the gospel there, right? Well, that's just my crazy imagination, you know? If God is willing. When you're vacationing, why not? You know? Amen. So, yeah. If the Lord wants you to go to India or whatever, you know what happened to Brother Bhatti, his story. Well, all things work together for good. Thank you, Lord. Right? All things work together for good. So sometimes, so God is still in control in spite of what's happening in the world. So let's just finish our race. That's all we can do. Finish Amen. our race. Amen. God wants God is busy, I believe, the second coming. You know, if this is Armageddon, remember Biden already made the warning. We are much, much closer to Armageddon than in 1962. You know, the Cuban Missile Crisis. It's true, I really believe that. And here's what I can say. If this is the fulfillment of Revelation, then nobody can stop Mr. Putin. If God is willing. Because he's been predestined. See, how will Armageddon happen? Somebody has to do it. Somebody has to be the trigger man, right? He will use somebody, yeah. Like Judas. Yeah. You know, if somebody was predestined to set the Jesus be dissolved for 30 pieces of silver, somebody has to do it. Mm -hmm. right. right? Do you right. want to volunteer? <laughs> We're not, God is not using us. <laughs> the sign of perdition. <laughs> Prophesied in the Old Testament. Wow. 
This is the sovereign. We're talking now about the sovereignty of God. Yeah. Yes. Amen? Amen. That is why whatever happens to you, always think about all things work together for good. Romans 8, 28. By the way, it's going to get worse. <laughs> well, China, the Congress, the Communist Congress had a big national meeting mm -hmm. and they made a decision that by 2027, they will, have, they will have to take Taiwan by either force. by peace or by force. That's four years from now. It's theirs. Yeah. And you know why China rebuilt their military in the, in the last 30 years? Their navy is now bigger than the U.S. And they have more hypersonic missiles than the U.S. Because they have money. You know they're rich. We're buying from them. They have more money. <laughs> they're, they're not, their military budget is 10 times that of the U.S. So this will be a terrible war. So Ukraine and Taiwan, well, I don't know what will happen. So four years, hang on to your property. <laughs> Maybe one time when it's millionaire will buy your townhouse for five million. From, from Taiwan. Yeah, if, they, if they panic, if they decide to leave the country. Yeah. Move here. They will come here. <laughs> Amen. We never know. Right? God knows. That's a possibility. God knows. Remember, four years they will take Taiwan by peace or by force. So let's just relax. Let's just have bubble tea after the service, right? Yeah, yeah. we go to the one. Yeah, this is good news. <laughs> Nothing to worry. All things work together for good. He's in control in a way. Why worry? Yeah. All things work together for good. I just pity those seniors in Ukraine who have no power, no water, no electricity. And it's cold. It's winter. And it's cold. It's terrible. But you know, God has a purpose for all these things. That's the hard part. Yeah. Yeah. Discipline. God has a purpose. Discipline. Yeah. Unbelieving. Yeah. But you know, the, the ultimate goal is that those whom he predestined might come to know him. Amen. That's God's ultimate agenda for the salvation of many sinners the elect the, the predestined amen sometimes we get saved the hard way right the hard way that's how we get saved the hard way anyway let's leave that now so that's the master plan you find discipleship is the master plan not religion Christ likeness there's a difference between Religion and Christ likeness. Right? Religion, you can fake it. Right? You can. Brother. Sister. You can do that to everyone, you know, and look so pious. After that. But Christ likeness is a different category. Thank you, Lord. It means you have the Spirit of God in you. You, you just act naturally. That's it. Naturally. Amen. When your wife asks you, oh, why don't you smoke anymore? Because I don't like it anymore. Thank you, Lord. Natural. Yeah. yeah. It's the Spirit of God. Amen. It's working. Amen. Anong pilitan yun? O ba't hindi ka na umiinom? Because I just lost my taste. Thank you, Lord. Deliver. Amen. Amen. That's like Zacchaeus, you know, the tax collector. Why are you returning all the money that you stole? Because Jesus came to his house. <laughs> right? Came to your house. Remember the tax, the corrupt tax collector? After he got saved, he said, I will return my, all this money. Now. And double it, double it, yeah. Amen. Even double it. Amen. Because he became a convert, a disciple, a disciple of Jesus Christ. Okay, let's go to the book of Luke now. The price of discipleship. How long have I preached now? I don't know. The price of discipleship. Luke 15. This is my last text. The cost of discipleship. There's a price to pay. Let's read this. Okay, if anyone 
verse 26, 15, 14, 26, Luke 14, 26. If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father, mother, wife, children, brothers, sisters, yes, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Very simple. You know, Jesus is not saying, I hate. want you to kill your father, your hate, mother tonight. He's mother, not saying no. that. He's not teaching that you should hate your parents. All Jesus is saying here is, if you love them more than me, you're not worthy of me. Yeah. You cannot be my disciple. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So if God calls you and you say, I can't be a disciple, I can't be a pastor, Lord, because I don't want to leave my papa. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right? No. Then how can God use you, right? You don't want to leave your parents. If you, oh, I have a, an excuse. You know, I always have an excuse for not following Christ because we have a family gathering today. Or, you know, my father doesn't want me to be a born again Christian. Right? Or if you are a secret born again Christian uh, and you don't tell your parents because you're afraid of persecution, then you love them more than Jesus. Mm -hmm. You don't want to offend them. Yeah. So. Your loyalty, when it comes to relationship, has to be Jesus first. Amen? Amen. Amen. Jesus first. Well, if your friends abandon you because of Christ, well, you have, you have to choose Christ first. Yes. If your wife abandons you, Amen. persecutes you, Christ. you know, you have to choose Christ first. It's as simple as that. Whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Well, we carry a cross. We carry our cross. You know, for me, 30 years, I said earlier, the difference between calling and a job, right? Today, I feel like I'm fulfilling a calling, 1989 prophecy. It's just natural. Amen. But doing a job sometimes is difficult, right? <laughs> You know that I, I carried a cross for 30 years doing a job of a pastor. It's a job. It's a job. But God's preparation for this. Amen? Mm -hmm. For the evangelist prophecy. And there's a cross to pay. Well, yeah. you know, the disciples, the, the apostles, paid, they all died of martyrdom. The apostles of Jesus Christ, they all died. I think except for John or something. He died of old age. Yeah. Most of them were shot by an arrow, cut in half, crucified, <laughs> sewn in half, crucified. They were all marked. Upside down. Peter was yeah, upside so, down. You know, if you don't want to suffer, uh, for Christ. And, you know, you can't be a disciple if you don't want to follow the footsteps of Jesus. Jesus said, if they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they hated me, they will also hate you. Because you are a disciple. Uh, a disciple is not greater than the master, right? Mm -hmm. Is Jesus your servant? <laughs> he follows you. <laughs> <laughs> is Jesus the one following you? He's your servant. No, you must be willing to suffer. That's why I hate prosperity gospel. Because they made Jesus a servant. He's my healer, he's my provider, he's my protector. Okay. Well, what about you? Okay. I'm the employer. Mm. I'm the master. And he follows me. Well, that's not discipleship. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, if you're not willing to carry your cross, you cannot be my disciple. I mean, you saw my video on why Jesus said he did not come to bring peace but a sword. Did you listen to that? Remember I said Jesus is not a consumer product. Mm -hmm. Oh, consumer Christians will hate me. That's fine. I don't believe in prosperity doctrine. We did not follow Jesus to consume. Right? Jesus is not a consumer product. He's the Savior. 
He wants to save you from your sin. But he will you must repent and believe. That's the price to pay for being a Christian. He will bless you in return. And how many millions of people follow Christ because he's their insurance policy? That's mm -hmm. different. Mm -hmm. Where's your cross? Show me your cross before I believe that you're a Christian. Amen? That's it. If you can't carry your cross, then you're not a disciple. It's as simple as that. There's a price to pay. You know, Jesus said, if you're, you know, if you're building a house, a tower, count the cost first. Make sure you're able to finish it. Otherwise, people will laugh at you because you tried to build your tower and it's abandoned because you ran out of funds. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, you know, first count the cost. Then build a tower, otherwise people will mock you. Right? So yeah, you wanna be a Christian? God made you one. Amen. That's why you know that, that sinner's prayer can be dangerous. You know, Paul the evangelist Paul Washer hates the sinner's prayer. He hates it. Search it. He doesn't believe in it. Because it deceives people. Because the people think, if I pray the sinner's prayer, I'm already saved. If it's not from the heart. Yeah. And then they pray it. Oh, that's, really? I just need to go to the altar and, and get the blessing from the pastor, say the sinner's prayer, and I'm a Christian. And then I don't go to church 10 years. <laughs> And then I do the follow-up and I ask, brother, how are you? Well, 10 years ago, you prayed in the kitchen for me. The sinners prayed, see? No change. Naging accessory pa ako ng deception. No change life. I don't, I'm not, not going to do that. Yeah. Right? That's why there was a time, binawi ko lang. Everyone I led in prayer, let's do it again. Again. Forget what we did before. Yeah. Right? No proof. Because I want you to go to heaven. Yes. No Amen? I don't want to deceive you. If I ever said to anyone, I, le I led you, you are now a child of God. Well, I'm like the Pope. <laughs> I sinned. Mm. Only God can say you are a child of God. Only God can do that. I can't. I don't have the power to say that. Right? That's why I better be careful now. That, you know, there's a, an apologist, uh, yeah, Paul Washer too, he said, here's how I lead people to the Lord, okay? It's true, at some point we pray together, but I, I, make, I say to this brother, brother, uh, I will monitor your life for the next three months to one year, and then we will talk again. Mm, and that. he will look at that person, and if he thinks there's a real conversion, then he will affirm the person. Yeah. Right? With proof, yeah. Paul Washer, the evangelist Paul Washer. Then he declares the person a child of God. Mm -hmm. Born again. You will know them by the see? fruits. You know them by the fruits. First, you have to see discipleship in that person's life. Christ likeness. Hunger, yeah. Before we even welcome the person into our fellowship. Mm -hmm. Amen. Lord. So it's true, you know. Are you willing to, you know, this is Jesus' gospel. If you're not willing to carry your cross, you cannot follow me. That's hard, isn't it? Mm -hmm. If you're not willing to carry my cross, you cannot be my disciple. If you're not willing to forsake all that you have, verse 33, so likewise, whoever of you does not forsake all that you have cannot be my disciple. Will you, will you attract sinners to come to Jesus Christ saying this? No. You want to carry your cross? You want to forsake all that you have? Come to Jesus. But this is how Jesus explained the gospel. This is how Jesus presented the gospel. Mm -hmm. And then people will think, oh, if that's the gospel, then it's impossible. 
to get saved. Remember somebody said to Jesus, well, who then will be saved? One of them is the same. Mm -hmm. You know what Jesus said? With God, all things are possible. You know why? Because if you are ordained, predestined, remember Romans 8, 28, those whom he foreknew, those whom he predestined, All things work together for good because God will draw them. Those whom he foreknew, predestined, he called, he saved. With God, all things are possible. And sometimes I like to present the gospel that way, you know. Hard, really hard. Don't worry because whoever God will save will get saved. Mm -hmm. And whoever will reject it is a clear sign that they're not interested, right? That's how we need to preach the gospel. You know, the problem nowadays, that is why we don't see a lot of disciples in the churches. Is some pastors, prosperity priests, they're guilty of watering down the gospel. You know what I mean? Pagandai natin yung gospel. Right? Let's water it down. Let's make it appealing to the world. So what do you get? You attract the world. Right? They make promises of you will have Cadillacs, you will be healed, you will be prosperous, wow. you will be happy, you will be successful. Wow. Joel Lustin's gospel. And so the world loves to have these things. It's a blessing, sure. Yeah, absolutely. Of course, if I preach these things, I'll have a hundred people here right away. <laughs> You'll be I rich. I did that for 30 years. You'll be rich. Yeah. I tried to make the gospel... Uh, it's like your coffee. How do you want your coffee, sir? I want it light, <laughs> super light. And then when they, when they give you the coffee and it's still a little bit, can you add more hot water, please? It's too hard. It's too strong. <laughs> the coffee pan. That's how he wants to drink his coffee, like tea. <laughs> A lot of people like the gospel that way, you know. Tickling Serve me a super light gospel. You know? Don't talk about the cross. Don't talk about discipleship. Don't talk about Christ likeness. Amen. Don't you know, Mister So and So is a tax collector. <laughs> yeah. Sakhaev. Don't you know Sakhaev is here? <laughs> you don't want to offend Sakhaev. <laughs> This is common in the churches. They, then they add a lot of entertainment, you know, high-end music entertainment. Of course. So you see the rockers, the drummers. That happened. We attracted a musician and he, he played the drum drunk. <laughs> La sing. They high on drugs for high. High on drugs. Because we had no standard in the worship team. That was our first year. <laughs> we just came to church still. The hangover and still play the guitar late. I won't forget that. I was a first year novice amateur pastor, you know. Still hot. Because I'm trying to be nice to people. You know? Everybody come. You're welcome to do what you want here. This guy just played the drum. Wow. I'm sorry, God. God. See, that's what happens when you water down the gospel. Mm. Right? Water down. Let's not do, Jesus said, if you're not willing to forsake, you know the, the rich man, he was rich, right? The parable of the rich fool. He had all kinds of reasons. He went to Jesus. He wanted to follow Jesus. And then he talked about religion, right? He boasted about religion. He said, Lord, from the day I was born, since I was young, I had my my first uh, communion, you know, I did this and I did that. I followed the Ten Commandments. Went to the yeah. temple, I did the Ten Commandments. All religious works. And Jesus said, you want to be perfect? Sell everything that you have. <laughs> come follow me. Give to the poor, then come follow me. Well, you know, 
Jesus invited him, but he turned his back and went, walked away sorrowful. He's not willing. Yeah. But Peter, they left their trade, their fisher, their nets. They left their fishing gear, their boat. The fair. Right? Luke, the doctor, the physician, they left their trade and they followed Christ. Thank you, Lord. But this guy, rich man, well, he turned his back sorrowful. He was sad, yeah. He turned his back and maybe he's saying, Pabi sa kabilang church, walang standard. Doon na lang ako. Doon na lang ako pupunta. Accept siya, accept siya. But look at Joe and Austin. With all his riches. Nandiyan yung mga LBGT. He doesn't preach about sin. Bakit yan si Abby na nagmayan ng evangelist na yan masyadong straightforward. Straight. <laughs> you know, this is my brand. Yeah. This is my brand. You know, I, I shared that video. I'm almost on that video. Brother Noel Price from California, he preached here, right? Remember him? Jay, white, white. Joash, uh, mentor. A white guy from California. He, he's a pastor. For, he said 20 years, he's, he's 10, 15 his members are only like 15 to 20. Young adults, yeah. I think there's an advantage to that. <laughs> you lang talaga ang mga disciple na totoo. He lasted long though, yeah. <gasps> he, 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 he just take care of a small crowd, small group of disciples, 15 to 20 people. <clears throat> Through the years. So, anyway, so, he said, I shared this, this gospel, you know, why this video, why did Jesus say, I did not come to bring peace. But the sword. But the sword. Then he said, thank you for sharing the unfiltered gospel. Unfiltered, he called it the unfiltered gospel. So that's my brand. Amen. Okay, so yeah, if you're not willing to forsake, you know, I will continue to do this because you know what I really believe with all my heart? It's the hard gospel that saves. Okay? Amen. Because Paul said it. This is my conclusion. Paul said it in 1 Corinthians 1, 18. The preaching of the cross, the message of the cross is foolishness yeah. to the world. Okay? But to those who are being saved, the power of God. it is the power of God. Right? So here's, I have two choices here. I can attract the world. Okay, but let's serve them super light gospel. Okay? They will not get saved. Compromise. I don't want to do that. Compromise gospel. Paul already said the gospel is foolishness. See, that's the problem. A lot of preachers, they don't want to be, they don't want to offend the world. So when, it, when they present the gospel, they, they try to make it sugar-coated. But the preach ka pa. To attract. I mean, if, kung gano'n naman ang gagawin ko, bakit, di ba waste of time na brother? Waste of money. Di lolo ko lang yung mundo. Resources. I'm just deceiving the world. Yes, you can attract, you can have a lot of them in your church, but you're deceiving them. Yeah. So I'm Joe Lucien the second. Yeah, yeah, man, can We can have a lot of donations here <laughs> just by doing that. Yeah. But you know, when I stand before God, yeah, I will be judged for how I present. See. Paul already said, remember, to, remember what I said, 1 Corinthians 1, 18. How are sinners saved when they hear a foolish message? See, to the world is foolishness. Kalukuhan sa mundo. But to those who are being saved, at first, no offending sila. Kalukuhan din sa kanila at first. But when the Spirit operates, and opens their eyes, they are drawn. Yeah. See? Yeah. That's the only way sinners 
are saved. Sinners don't get saved by softening the gospel, by watering down the gospel. Compromised. See, I have in the past promised healing, blessings. Guess what? I attract a lot of people. I attracted a lot of people. Not to the gospel. Yeah. Pero hindi naman si save. Yeah. I'm not producing disciples. Mm -hmm. Amen? Are you with me? Do you understand what I'm trying to say here? How many of you, how, how many of you have seen that in the last 20 years? Asan yung mga tao na yun? Are they in church? Well, if they're in somebody's church, praise God. But if they're not in church, but they have become part of us for five years, then they really did not understand the gospel. Yeah. Because I should have preached repentance when they were still here. Right? I should have preached heaven and hell. I should have preached born again, right? You must be born again in, in order to enter the kingdom of God. You know, I must, even though it sounds foolishness, you know, that term born again is offensive on Facebook. That's offensive. But hey, I will keep doing this because that's the only way sinners will be saved. You have to present the truth. Amen. That's why Paul said, I preach Christ crucified. First Corinthians, I believe, chapter 4, I preach, or chapter 2, I preach Christ crucified. Listen to this. I preach Christ crucified to the Jews, a stumbling block. To the Greeks, foolishness. Mm -hmm. And the my Jews and Greeks. But Paul said, I preach Christ crucified. crucified. Amen. That's the message of the cross. You have to call people to repent of their sins. Amen? Amen. Then you produce disciples. Genuine disciples. God bless you. Let's pray. Amen. Thank you. In the name of Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. I don't really mind being labeled a foolish preacher here because of the things I speak sometimes. But hey, if the Spirit is opening the minds of the hearers, there are those that will be drawn to salvation. And I thank you that the gospel has broken free to the world. It's on public, live, and it will be on YouTube channel, and I pray many will hear this. To those who will be convicted by the gospel, drawn to the cross of Jesus Christ, it's because the power of God will save you. To those who will reject it and be offended, it's because they are blind. Lord, help us to finish our race, our mission. We will preach the gospel until the end. The unfiltered gospel of Jesus Christ is what we are going to preach to the world. And I thank you. Let the Holy Spirit now do the work in the hearts of men, in the hearts of those hearers. We thank you. In the mighty, mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Brother Al Abram. Thank you, June uh, Gabuda. Uh, Mel Lucero. Sister Lou. Sita Lou. She's uh, my friend in California. We went to Japan back in 85. Thank you for watching. Amen. And there's more names out there on YouTube. Sorry, on Facebook. Thanks for watching. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Thanks for listening. Amen.